I saved these because I use these for Aurora. That's why. Oh. And I, I opened my locker and I was like, oh, wait, I do have dead shoes. Well, do you do that? We're like, if it's like I, a special shoe. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> That's it's so, so cheesy. cute. Yeah. No, I love it. Because it's like, what, how many 500,000 pairs have you gone through? And yeah. it's like, you have like your special pair yeah. that you wore for certain performances. That's really sweet. Yeah. Hey, this is Josephine from The Point Shop. I'm at San Francisco Ballet, and I'm with Sasha DeSola, who is a principal dancer at San Francisco Ballet. And it's so cool because we met, what, a month ago? Two yeah, months ago? two months ago. Two yeah. months ago, and I'm so fangirling right now because she is freaking amazing. So we're going to talk about the point shoe that she wears and the things that she does to them. All right. So I wear uh, custom-made repettos. Basically, the only thing that I do to them once I get them is I darn the tip, and I can go into that in a moment. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things I really love about them is the shank is a perfect mix of hard and pliable for my feet because my feet are strong and bendy, but I need a bit of support as well. Um, and I have the sides cut down a little bit as well as the heel so there's not too much excess satin. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the shoe. Yeah, a lot of dancers actually do that custom. No matter what shoe you wear, a lot of dancers cut down the sides. Uh, a lot of dancers in training, they wear like a low heel and then they find that the heel keeps slipping off of them because they don't know how to like kind of go up on point yet. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, that's this very popular custom for a professional dancer. Sasha has been in the company for 12 years. I know, she does not look like she could be that at all. I was like, what do you mean you're a principal? You're 15. <laughs> but um, but you just recently switched to Repetto's. Right, yeah. So I switched to Repetto um, right after I had a serious injury on my left foot. I tore my Lis Franc ligament, which started to cause a lot of other issues as well. Um, and I was actually out for a year with wow. that. So it was a very serious injury. And um, before I injured myself, I was um, really wanting to have more control over the tips of my shoe, so have my toes really grab the shoe a little bit better, and I felt that I wasn't really able to do that in my freeze. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came back, I figured it was the perfect time to switch shoes, because it's really hard to switch shoes oh, once yes. you've been in something for so long. Yes. Um, so coming back, it was almost like a clean slate. Yes even though it still felt different, but um, I decided to take the chance and kind of go for it. And I'm really glad I did because mm -hmm. I think these shoes suit my feet much better. Mm -hmm. If you go through a hiatus with dance, your body kind of resets itself. Mm -hmm. So if you were a dancer and then you danced for a long time when you're a kid and then you come back as an adult even, your body kind of like starts to reset. So your balance is a little bit different. Your body is responding differently. Yeah. So especially, so the same thing with injuries. If you're injured for a very long time and you have been off point for a long time, it's good to try out different shoes because it's the perfect time to kind of reset mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the, I don't know what kind of Freed's you were in. Were you in the wing blocks or? No, I was in um, Freed Studios. Like I was in stock shoes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I was in stock shoes that I had been wearing since I was in school. Mm -hmm. um, mostly for, at, at the time when I was in school, it was mostly for financial reasons, basically. Sure. That they were more affordable and easier to get. And once I joined the company, it was hard for me to switch. I actually thought about switching to Freed Classics and I even got fitted in them, but um, it just, they weren't working out for me. And so I just stuck with the Freed Studios. That's, so that's interesting yeah. too. Not a lot of professionals wear studio mm -hmm. pros, but if you're a dancer in training, that is a really good point. Mm -hmm. The studio pros are much easier to get because they are not dependent on a specific maker. And it's also, they're made to last a little bit longer. It doesn't always happen that way, but they were really created to make them last a little bit longer. So that's something that you want to think about if you are trying to freed. So let's talk a little bit more about the repettos. Like when you switched to these, I know there was an adjustment period, mm -hmm. but what was the main difference between like your old shoes and these? Um, the first thing was the fit was much better for me and mm -hmm. um, the structure of the shoe. So the vamp is slightly shorter than what my freeds were, which um, works better for me for exactly the reason I was looking for, which is control of the end of the mm -hmm. shoe. Um, 
And also I felt that the shank, I need a supportive shank that still responds to my foot, if that makes any sense. And these shoes really did that for me. Mm -hmm. Can I see your feet? Yeah. Wow, you have really mobile ankles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of professional dancers really like their shoes like super, super soft. Mm -hmm. um, they're, I, I feel like there are a few that really like their shoes hard and supportive. Mm -hmm. So you're one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly do you go through your shoes? Um, I can go through one pair per day. Usually. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Even when the shoe is this hard? Oh yeah. I will break <laughs> a shank in 40 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And then I glue it. Well, no wonder you have to get your shoes so hard. Yeah. So do you glue before you start wearing that? I put them on. So this is what I do to break in my shoes. Mm -hmm. I put them on. I go up on Releve like three times and that's mm -hmm. it. That's like all like I broken do. in and then done. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise I'll be, for example, when I did Sleeping Beauty, I had to wear brand new shoes for each act. Yeah. Well, that's another story for my archive because <laughs> when people are like, oh my gosh, my shoes didn't last more than a month, I'm going to be like, well, <laughs> Sasha DeSola goes through a shoe in 40 minutes. <laughs> um, is this a dead pair for you? This is a dead pair for me. Okay, like, I cannot wear these. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this really quick. This is really hard. Like, I can barely bend it. <laughs> So everybody's dead point is very different. So a lot of people ask me like, how do you know when they're dead? Like only you will know. Mm -hmm. Because this is a really hard shoe and a lot of people will say they can't even wear this because it's too, it's too hard. But for Sasha, these are dead. <laughs> and it does, it's barely moving right in the metatarsal. So everybody's dead point is very different. You can't really answer that question. You kind of have to like figure that out on your own. And yeah. then I see that you sew on the ribbon mm -hmm. with the satin part on the inside or the I shiny do. part on the inside. Mm -hmm. So there's several different types of ribbons. There's like an all matte one. There's um, a satin one with the shiny part on one side and then matte on the other side. Sasha sews the satin one where it's like shiny on one side and then matte on the other and she exposes the matte side on the outside yeah so that's interesting is it just for looks or yeah, is it function just aesthetic yeah i think it looks <laughs> i don't like when the ribbons are too visible on the yes foot i feel like it cuts the line of the leg too much yes um and i also sew my ribbons really far back mm -hmm. only for aesthetic reasons again it's to kind of lengthen this part of my foot. Ah, um, yeah. I think it looks better on my foot. Yeah, and also your arch kind of breaks high too, so that mm -hmm. makes it prettier. Yeah. Like it's functional too, like yeah. pulls up on the arch. Yeah. And I noticed these tights, and I talk about these all the time. These are stirrup tights. Yeah. So a lot of dancers will wear convertible tights where it just has the hole at the bottom of your foot. Uh, most professionals will either roll up their tights, don't wear tights, or wear stirrup tights because it grips onto your shoes better, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it like holds onto the heel better because point shoes always hold onto skin better than it does to tights. And if you put rosin, I put rosin on oh, my yeah. heels That's every single show, mm. just in case. And actually also on my toes. So I always have my toes and my heel exposed, even mm -hmm. in pink tights. Um, and then I'll put rosin on both so that my foot is really solid in my shoe yes have you ever had like an incident where like you lost a shoe on stage <gasps> no thankfully <laughs> <laughs> no. I find some wood <laughs> knock on <off> there <laughs> no but I did not that long ago have a ribbon not untie but the um I double sew my shoes every time I use them for a show not mm -hmm. for rehearsals but for a show I always have everything double sewn mm -hmm. and somehow one of the ribbons and I sew with floss and somehow the sewing came off. And so I had like one long giant ribbon oh because gosh. they were still tied together <laughs> <laughs> during Swan Lake and it was just Amazing. terrible. Yeah. So that Amazing. was, I, I was like so distracted <laughs> by it. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like ballerinas are so <laughs> ready for life. Like, because like, no matter what happens, it's just like the show must go on. Yeah. And then you'll have to like, whatever's happening up here, mm -hmm. you're like, it's still ha like Gotta performance. Do it. Gotta do it. <laughs> that's so funny. But that if that's the worst, that's not bad. Luckily, yeah. L shoe wise, yes. One of the things I really like about Repetto is that I don't, jet glue the box at all and mm -hmm. it stays very consistent mm -hmm. and it keeps its structure 
even once the shank is like completely dead, at least for me, mm -hmm. I, I can continue to use the box. That's great. Yeah. Do you ever use like a dead pair or like a de-shanked pair for class or anything? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I have before. Can you, how's, how's the de-shanking process with Repetto? Is it fairly easy? Um, yeah, you just it's, it's pull it off. Pull it off. Yeah. And then do you tape it down or anything? Yeah, I tape it down. Okay, so yeah. that's another trick too. If you want to build your foot strength, it's almost better to work through a de-shanked point shoe than like a flat shoe. Mm -hmm. Now everything's so soft. Mm -hmm. Wearing a de-shanked shoe or even just a regular point shoe for bar or for center in class mm -hmm. is helpful and it definitely makes your feet stronger. Yeah. But again, it's not only wearing the shoe. It's right. the way you're using the shoe. And that's just true. Being really, really conscious of that. I think that's one of the best tips for dancers in training because I think after a while you start to go through the motions, especially mm -hmm. when you start to get tired, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But you have to super be mindful mm -hmm. it, to get better because, mm -hmm. like, that's that's all it is. It doesn't matter what you're working through. You have to just be mindful of your training. So this is what it looks like when it's brand new versus after she wears them. The darning actually really gives you a great edge mm -hmm. because if you look at the Repetto box, it's kind of rounded. Mm -hmm. And a lot of point shoes do that. When it, when it's a little bit rounded, it's kind of easier to roll through and everything, but it's harder to find like the center of your platform. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of cool. And also this makes it last a little bit longer too. Yeah, yeah definitely. And <clears throat> last a little bit longer, like meaning for Sasha, it's like, 40 minutes or 45 minutes? 47. 47 yeah. minutes if she darns it. 40 minutes if she does it. Yeah. After this injury in my arch, I realized I was kind of holding my foot back a little bit. Yes. Like I, it was pointed, but I wasn't fully extended. Mm. Um, and so I started darning my shoes and I realized I could really use my leg and my foot and my arch to its fullest degree mm. without going over. Because if I were to do that on these shoes, I'd literally be dancing like on this part of right. the shoe, pretty much. So you were almost like subconsciously afraid to use the full extension of yeah. your foot. Yeah. So if you have really gorgeous, like flexible feet, that's a really good tip for you. If you darn, then it's going to be a little bit safer or like it feels a little bit more secure. Mm -hmm. So you can really use the full extension of your foot and your ankles. Yeah. It just provides like almost like a little wall, like mm. a little barrier so that it makes it much harder to go way too far mm -hmm. past, you know, your safe point in your foot. Right. And then there's a couple different ways to darn your point shoes. Mm -hmm. You darn it in a very specific way. Yeah, I do. Um, so I do the knotted way, basically, which is making mm -hmm. a series of knots around your shoe. Um, so I first go through and I knot all the way around. And then I go through again and I pull the knot out, if that makes sense. So I just mm -hmm. make a loop pulling the knot mm -hmm. out this way. And that's all I do. Mm -hmm. And then do you just do it once? Just once. Okay, so yeah. some dancers will do it over and over again if they can make their shoes last a little bit longer, mm -hmm. but you probably don't even have time to like, no. redarn your point shoes no. like that already. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so she doesn't do a whole lot. I think the, most of your customs are like to make your shoes last longer or as long as possible for mm -hmm. you. And then you do jet glue. Mm -hmm. um, I can see it on the outside. Some dancers will jet glue on the inside and some dancers jet glue on the outside. Some dancers mm -hmm. do both. Um, and then it's mostly on the arch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is this where you normally break your shoes? Yeah. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just the creases. So you can actually put it on the shank. Some dancers do that too. But if you do it on the creases, I feel like it's a little bit more like moldable. Yeah. If the jet glue makes the shoe just like a solid brick, mm -hmm. then it's also not usable. No. So it's a fine line with jet glue, at least for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that if I just do it on the sides, it really helps a lot. Yes, so it's not like too much. Yeah. Because that happens a lot too, where yeah. like you're not used to jack glowing, so you're just like, let me put it on the whole shoe and it does turn into a brick. Yeah. And like, what do you do with that? Yeah. Like, no matter what you do, it just doesn't work yeah. anymore. And this one isn't jet glued yet. No, not yet. So I only use this pair once for one show and this pair once for one show. So do you jet glue even with your show shoes? Depends on the shoe. So this pair I did. Mm hmm. And that pair didn't, yeah, I don't know, it just, that shoe must have been, this pair must have been stronger. I don't mm. know. I just didn't feel the need 
too for these. Yeah, so you kind of like feel it out before you jet glue, mm -hmm. like you need it or not. Yeah. Can we see it on you? Sure. Yeah. yeah.